Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this video we are going to talk about Node.js with the Postgres. Okay. And we are going to use the client library and we will see how we can do the integration. In the last video we talked about the MongoDB with the Node.js without using ORM ODM libraries. And in the next video we will talk about MySQL. Okay. For the simple setup we are already running our Docker Compose. It has the Postgres connection details. Everything is test, 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 right? So this is my Postgres. When, whenever you are doing Docker Compose up, it will give you MongoDB and Postgres up and running. Okay, now let's start our uh, simple journey. Here we are going to write something for the Postgres. So we'll first of all, we'll go inside that folder and we are going to use PZ client library. First of all, we'll do npm init just to set up our package.json and then we will install all required things. We can install we need express, we need uh, we need Postgres client, right? These are the only major dependencies we see in our application, we'll install them. Once it is done, we can simply create index.js where we are going to import all the things. And let's say we are going to create another file which is queries where we are going to write all the all the queries to query the database, insert, update, delete because here we are using a simple example. Okay, in the index.js we can simply, I mean, the, what is the basic thing which we have done here in the Mongo also? We can just import the express and all these things on from the top. We will create the routes, we will create one DB file. So, this is our index.js. Okay, what we will do is we will create app instance from the express and then we will just define a simple route. I mean, we can do everything in a single file. Let's create two different files. One for managing the queries and database connection. Another is, uh, file is for express app and all different routes. Okay, so this is my port. Port, let's say you are saying 3002. Okay, and you can register all the middlewares. App.use. We are using body parser. So we can say body parser dot json and all the other middlewares m dot use body parser url and code both you will register and then we will just define the route url encode inside the object what we pass is extended true okay this is our simple middleware and then we can say app dot get whenever the request is coming for forward slash i will just say request and response and i will say hello world hello to the server response.json routes first of all let's get all the queries queries equal to require i mean it can be a database interface or something like that And we can simply say, okay, let's rename it to DB. That is more appropriate name. And then now we can define all the routes app.get. This is my route endpoint. Okay. And then the callback, I mean the handler. So we are going to define all the methods here. Get users. So all these methods app.get port post, get post, put, delete. And finally, app dot listen inside callback. You just define the port. You pass the port, and then there is a callback where you can say, "Okay, my server is connected." Now let's start to get users. Here we are going to create all the methods. So it will be post, put, and delete. So inside put, we are going to pass the ID. So the root context will be users forward slash id. This is uh, I'm updating. This is I'm deleting. These are 
in the query param uh, sorry in the path param this is the post this is get users so we can also have one more user by id like return all the users is the first api give me a user for a particular id so here we can call it as a get user by id get all so it is it should be create user it should be update user and this should be delete user okay we are good here now what we can do is we define all these methods inside our queries.js which is managing all the connection now the important part is this because this we already know how to write a simple express server how to actually write the services controllers and all i mean simple express generator gives you all these things you don't even need to write so now we are talking about postgres client how can we connect to the postgres database so what we are doing is we are using this require pz library right and what we can do is we can create the instance of client by passing all the credential for your database which are user is test okay then we have all the other credentials like user host database port so i can copy all these things from my docker compose and i have pasted it here now i can do is client dot connect if there is any failure it will return an error okay and i i can also simply do client dot query query that my database is connected or not client dot query and i can say select select a uh, simple query select now i can say and if it is successfully connected right then we will get the response otherwise you will get the error so it's a callback error comma response this is the error function and here we can check error first check if error is there that means we are in trouble and our connection is not done successfully something is wrong with the database connection otherwise we are connected right so console.log db connected now we can write over all the functions which we are exporting from here like get users const get users arrow function and here we are uh, defining all the attributes so it is taking two things because it's a express route handler it is taking a request and response and here we are using client dot query there is a method you define your query this is common for all the methods get put post delete whatever the operation we are doing it is going to return us error or the result And then we can see if there is an error let's say you got an error then we will deal it differently otherwise uh, we will say response dot status 200 and then dot json result dot rows so here we are getting result and inside that you will get the rows if you got an error then what you will do is either you will just throw it or you can say response dot status 500 dot send i am going to throw this error in the response yes so get error get users similarly we can define all the methods and then we will export all these things together so what all other methods we have we have get put delete and all so we will define all of these okay let me go to the bottom let's say we have get user then we have get user by id i will also update the query for both these methods so this is get user by id it's just about how to integrate and how to trigger the query so second method is get user by id right so in this the only change first of all get user that means select star from user order by id simple query we can put here 
and here the another query is here we have to add a where clause right because we are using uh, we are not using ORM we are just using these simple libraries simple client library so we have to write everything select star from user we can write where close where ID is dollar ID and you can pass this I mean the argument is dollar one select star from user where ID equal to this and then you will pass this ID this is how you can pass the arguments to your query so dollar one is nothing but it will be replaced with the id in form of string okay then we have other which is like create create user here we are going to get the payload first of all get user by id here also we are going to get the id and we are getting this in the request parameter request dot params dot id clear and here while creating the user we are going to get things inside a payload so we can say const name and email this is we are going to get from the body name and email we are getting from request dot body we are already using body parser for that and here we are going to add our query so the query will be insert if you think about insert into table name these are these are the columns and these are the values right so simple query is i have copied all these templates so i'm just copying the query directly insert into user name email and return all and here instead of this we are going to pass name and email is an argument to the query so name will be set here email will be set here and once uh, if we get an area any error then we are going to return 500 after otherwise we can just return 201 and user has been created with the id so it will be just like html text user has been created created with id and how we can get the id we can get the id from the result dot rows so it's a little different than what we do first of all it's a dynamic message put that in the back text user has been created with we are getting the result result dot rows zero and from there you can do id okay so this is how this is the concept nothing nothing typical right it's just like how we similarly we are going to do with the mysql there is a mysql client you pass all the credentials you will get the connection object i mean the client object and then you will do the client dot query here we did for get all the users get user by id and create user similarly we can write update and delete delete we is doing nothing but it is going to trigger the query delete uh, from user where id equal to this so whatever we are doing with the get by id i can just replicate the same thing for delete user here I'm going to get the ID from the parameter so here the, the query will be delete from user where ID equal to this right and you can pass you are already passing the ID in the parameter and here it will be status will be different you can say status as a 204 I mean 201 204 you can simply send 204 without any message it's on you no content create user 201 get user 200 okay this is how it is now we can simply run this now what we need to do is go to our database because we just need a table also so that we can do the query against that table table we are not creating because we haven't written any migration so this is our simple table we are going to create a users table with id as a primary key name email right and we want to have id as a uuid so you need to just enable these extensions okay this is done i think we already have this table that is good now we can say is not index.js 
created now we can just hit these apis let's say this we can change to users 3001 this is where we are running so it is name email and i can send this request similarly i can get all these send request to get it's 3001 and the url is users just wanted to show that this is working we get the data that's good right so our apis are running you can test all the different apis which we have written so this is how you can do the integration with the postgres just by using the postgres client right what we did we just used postgres as a module got the client initialize the connection then doing just a query create update insert but we have to write our own queries to do all these things but when we have like complex application 20 to 30 tables then managing these row queries is a little dif difficult and it's better that we should use some kind of ORM I mean there are pros and cons of everything here we are writing SQLs vanilla SQLs and these are already optimized right these are optimized at a database level but when you use ORM you are actually running an abstraction on top of your database so there are there is a lot of Custom queries are built by these ORMs and th that are being executed. So always there is a performance hit when you use any kind of ORM. So if you have like small tables, small microservice, you can go with the simple queries. You can do join anything you want. For migration and seeders, you can use the different kind of ORM, SQLize type ORM. Those ORMs you can do to manage the the incremental changes in your database that is called migrations in different environments okay that's it we can also talk about mysql that is kind of similar in the next video